Oh, so the, it's got it's got drawers for his his stuff. This is a shirt we got him because it looked pretty cool. This so bedroom this belongs to someone who may never see it. To a, to a At this bed. point, we don't know when the kids are going to be able to arrive. Kishel Coleman works for Lutheran Social Services of the National Capital Area. The organization links refugee children with would-be foster parents. There are literally millions of children who need a chance, a chance just to find themselves and not to be completely in survival mode. Irene Stevenson is certified by the District of Columbia to foster a child. She's prepared her home to welcome a refugee girl from Somalia. They wouldn't be in this situation if they hadn't lost everything. They wouldn't be in this situation and be up to becoming refugees here in the U.S. if they had anything left to lose. People like Stevenson and the Robovskis in Maryland are now on uncertain footing because of the Trump administration's travel ban that includes refugees. It's safe to say that we've spoke to probably, probably close to 100 people about, about this, and no one has known what's going on. That's partly because of ambiguous language in an executive order defining who is and is not considered close family to refugees attempting to travel to the United States. As just citizens trying to interact with our government, it's really hard because we're just getting stonewalled um, and just don't know what the next action is if it's just saying, you know, awaiting further guidance. Neither the State Department nor Office of Refugee Resettlement responded to VOA's request for comment. But to these parents in waiting, government policy takes a back seat to welcoming a child into their homes. The bedroom that you will have, I, I have blinds, but I don't have curtains because I want to meet her before I decide what color to get the curtains, all right? Arash Erbasadi, VOA News, Washington.